I'm Micah, and I'm here with my fantastic team member, Katie. Hi. Today, we have the honor to speak with Mr. Mike Disa, writer of the new film, Space Dogs Tropical Adventure. Mr. Disa is a well-established contributor in the film industry and has worked as an animator for multiple projects with major studios such as Disney's The Origin of Stitch. Mr. Disa has also contributed to other animated films such as Looney Tunes, Back in Action, and Barnyard. In his most recent project, Mr. Disa is the co-writer for Space Dogs Tropical Adventure. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Oh, my pleasure. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Let's get started. So, Mr. Disa, you were part of the writing team for the previous Space Dogs movie, Space Dogs Adventure to the Moon. Can you tell us what it was like to distinguish this movie from the last? Well, sure. It's actually the third uh, movie in a trilogy. The first one was called just Space Dogs, obviously. And it's, it's very interesting. It's the story of Belka and Stroka, which were the first two creatures from the planet Earth to go into orbit and survive. Uh, Sputnik 5 was a, a, a Russian rocket where they were trying to test how to get, you know, human beings into orbit during the 1950s and 60s. And Belka and Stroka were the first two dogs to go into space and come back. Oh, wow. And they had this great life afterwards. They had puppies. And, <laughs> and you know, and uh, Stroka went on and she had six puppies with uh, a dog named Pushak who actually worked at ground control for the dogs, kind of. <laughs> and there's this whole great mythology about these dogs. It's not mythology, it's true. So they were heroes of the Russian um, space flight program. Uh, and they went up in 1960. And the first movie called Space Dogs was about that adventure. It was, it's a fun family film about these two dogs who get drafted to go into space. And it's kind of an odd couple, funny show. They've got wacky characters with them. And, you know, one of them is very posh, you know, and very British. And the other one is very, you know, street. She's a circus performer. And they have to go yeah. in, in, into space and get back together. And so I was asked when that first one came to the U.S., <clears throat> actually Europe, I was asked, like, how would I feel about um, translating it from the Russian into English and making sure that the, the jokes all were translated to work with a European English speaking audience, um, even Scotland. And um, we, <laughs> we, I'm sorry, I tried to make a joke there. But we, <laughs> um, we worked on that and it was fun. And it's a fun little G rated movie. It's good for the whole family. And it talks about, you know, the part of the space program that I think American kids aren't exposed to enough. Um, you know, the, the Russian space program is as interesting and dramatic and as is, is inspirational as ours. So I thought that'd be a great thing to get involved in. And so then they asked me, okay, we're doing a sequel um, where they actually have to go to the moon, which the real dogs never made it to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> and so I helped co-write that and I helped produce it. And, you know, you know, I hired a lot of the actors and everything here in the U.S. and Europe to, to do the translations. And that was a lot of fun. We really enjoyed that. And so then I was asked by the Russian studio and Epic Pictures, which is the co-producers here in the United States, if I wouldn't mind writing the third installment. And so um, uh, I was like, sure, that sounds like fun. And so they, so now Belk and Stroka are working for, you know, the United Nations type, uh, you know, world government. And they're off because they're the most experienced space dogs in the world, right? They're the originals. So they have to go to the tropics to investigate what turns out to be a downed alien spaceship. An adventure proceeds. So that's the story of that trilogy. Oh, wow. I didn't know about the backstory between Belka and Stroko, and that makes it makes the movie much more um, authentic. Yeah, it's, it's a true story. Well, <laughs> except for the aliens, <laughs> or so we think. Um, uh, it's a true people. story about uh, these, these hero, hero, heroic dogs and uh, their puppies. And there's a TV series, too, called Space Dog Family, I wrote. Oh, wow. And it's basically about their, um, their puppy. And their puppy is a real puppy named Pushak. And interestingly enough, one of the puppies, one of Belka's puppies, was gifted to John Kennedy and lived in the White House. <laughs> wow. So, and so the second movie involves that. It, there's a great history there of uh, the Russian and American space programs working together, even before the space station. And I just thought it was a great idea to bring that to American kids. Can you share any like funny behind the scenes moments while working on set? Um, the thing about it is you don't work on set with a cartoon. Uh, mm -hmm. What you do is it's always just drawings. It's always just drawings. So you're always just working with other artists, which is the best part about being in animation is to work with really talented artists and uh, always feel a little jealous and then work harder yourself to be able to draw. 
uh, as a Disney feature animator myself, it was really a pleasure to work with the overseas studios um, and you know this this team of very young Russian artists um, and to get to work with them and help train them and help them grow and watch the remarkable stuff they did. And they produced a beautiful movie. And every movie they produce is more beautiful than the one before. And they're, they're learning like gangbusters. And I'm, I'm very proud of all of them. So um, nothing really funny, you know, except for the fact that the internet always goes out right when you need it not to. But I suppose we're all used to that now, right? Yeah. But um, a lot of good times and good friends. I enjoyed it very much. Like you've said, you were one of the only Americans working on this film. So what was it like collaborating with your colleagues from other countries to write an entire movie? Well, <clears throat> well, it's a good question. So, and there's two answers to it. One of which I wasn't the only American. I'm the only like credited above the line American. But you know, there's okay. American producers and an American post team. And also, you know, um, Epic Pictures is an American company <laughs> and they partner with this, uh, with the Russian company to release it in Europe and across the world. Uh, so I was working with a lot of people who live and work in LA and Hollywood. Um, but the, the, it's always, always, always a lot of fun to work with overseas studios. I do it a lot. Um, and it's always fun to work with young artists who never think they're gonna get a chance to sit in a room with a, a Disney animator. And, you know, I can, there's so much I can show them. I was very lucky. I was trained by Eric Goldberg, the guy who animated the genie in Aladdin. And he was, he was trained by Richard Williams. And Richard Williams was trained by the great old nine old men of, of, of Disney's past. And the thing about animation, it's very much a mentor to student. You pass the knowledge on personally. It's just a craft that works like that. And it's, now that I'm older, Oh, let's be honest, old. Now that I'm old um, <laughs> and I'm no longer a young artist learning as much as I used to, it's really, really nice to go sit down with young artists, um, just a little older than yourselves, and help them and show them and bring them into the tradition to make them feel part of a craft that has lasted generations and has descended you know, from the mannerist paintings of Michelangelo. And um, it's great to feel like you're, you're, you're sharing this knowledge with the world and you're helping people who wouldn't nor normally get a chance because they can't get to the U.S. Uh, to learn this stuff. And I'm very, I enjoyed that very much. This sounds like a great experience. It is. So there were a lot of different animals in this film. How challenging was it to come up with unique personalities for each one? No, not at all. I mean, there's three unique personalities sitting right here, right? <laughs> so all you have to do is pay attention. You know, if you're a writer, you just look around you and there, there are, let's be honest, there's crazy people all around you all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you live in New Jersey. How many crazy people do you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> just everywhere. Wow. Um, I, so I do a lot of my writing uh, on trains and um, public transportation or parks or someplace where I can get out and I can just watch people behaving. And it's a lot of fun because it's like, you know, the thing about animation is you're not really you might be drawing a dog, you might be drawing a cat, you might be drawing a bird, but you're animating a person. You know, you're animating human being. That's what we respond to. And uh, that's part of the craft of animation and that's part of the craft of writing. And I enjoy it very much. <laughs> um, where did you draw your inspiration when writing this movie? Uh, well, well, obviously from the first two. But you know, that's a hard question to answer because every project I do, I find something to love about it. And I think that's the trick for anybody. So if you guys are gonna go on and you're gonna become journalists, you know, you, you may not, every story may not be the story you dreamed about reporting. I'm sure, you know, neither one of you wanted to be here talking to me, but you, what you have to do, <laughs> I'm teasing. But what you have to do is you have to find the thing you love about it. And as long as you do what you love, you will always find inspiration in it and you will always be happy. So that's the thing, as long as you do what you love, it's never a job and it's never an effort and the inspiration comes at the strangest moments, usually when I'm in the shower, which is weird. Um, who is your favorite character in this film? Uh, I'm not allowed to say that, they're all my, they're all my favorite characters. <laughs> they're all my favorite characters, I wrote them all. <laughs> yeah, they all have unique personalities, um, I thought. And finally, what message do you want the audience to take away from this film? 
just a, a general awareness that um, I think Americans, you know, have a, tend to forget history very quickly. <laughs> and um, the history of the space race and humans excursion from this planet for the first time uh, is, is a very complicated, but also informative and inspirational story. There was a time when we as human beings did great things. We did big things and we did them for complicated reasons, but mostly we did them because that's what human beings should do. We're at our best when we're striving. We're at our best when we're trying to achieve dreams. And during the 50s and 60s, we did something remarkable. We went to another planet. It used, there used to be a saying that says like, oh, you can no more do that than you could go to the moon. Well, we did it. And that means we can go to Mars. And if we can go to Mars, that means we can go anywhere. And that's where our future lays. And I'd really like kids in America to understand that the whole world feels like that. And the whole world are descended from explorers and we want and should go back. Wow, that is a great message. And I think that people will take that away from the movie. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and you know, there's lots of fun stuff, with, you know, dogs falling down and getting in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much, Mr. Mike Disa, for talking with us today. Space Dogs Tropical Adventure comes out in theatres on April 2nd, 2021. And on video on demand on April 6th, 2021. I'm Katie. And I'm Micah, reporting for Kids First. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our latest reviews or interviews. Bye. Bye.